Hey guys, in this video, I want to give you a quick overview of how to set up a library like ADO Century Strings. Um, I recently picked that one up and it's a wonderful library. Um, there were some hurdles I had to get through to make it efficient, uh, not just within Disabled Temple. If you're running on slaves, this will work as well. Um, but I just want to give you an idea through, uh, through my personal setup, uh, what it looks like. So anyway, you're looking at uh, one of the upcoming releases of OTR. Uh, it uses the FRXST uh, skin in this video. Uh, and this is going to be more like what version 1.6 looks like. Uh, this particular uh, skin has track folders, uh, so you don't end up with the little um, lines that exist uh, when you normally reduce things. I still use the shortcuts to hide out, um, you know, different channels and everything beneath it, the, the subfolders and hide MIDI and things like that. All of that I still use. Uh, this is just like an extra little perk depending on your workflow. So anyway, uh, if you picked up Sentry Strings, you'll know that they are key switch patches that load, have access to all the articulations in one patch. You can get 10 um, articulations per patch, which some people, that may be all they need. So if you do something like that, um, you could set it up very simply by having a VIL file um, from uh, OTR uh, as your header, and then just placing in uh, five different VIS, which are just uh, instrument tracks uh, with the single patches loaded. Uh, that's a very basic way to get going. Um, that was the very first thing I did. Then I got into the way that I wanted to do it. Now, I'm a one articulation per track kind of guy. Um, I'm sure you know that through all the different videos. However, this particular library presented, uh, well, a couple curveballs, and I liked it. Um, as the batter in the batter batter's box, I decided that um, there are some things that I wanted to change about my workflow and others that I had to figure out solutions. So, uh, one of the things that I liked was the idea of having a legato patch and then uh, separate patches or, or separate tracks for longs, separate for shorts and separate for arcs, and another one for trills, trims, and harmonics. Uh, that was suggested um, by Colin in his workflow on one of his videos, and I was like, you know, I'll give it a go. Mostly I did this because the track was taking each... Um, instance was taking upwards of 30 seconds to load a single patch. I'm not talking about all the samples. I'm talking about um, just straight up CPU beach ball, you know, on a Mac, the beach ball is like the uh, uh, getting hung up on processing. But I, I'd see the beach ball spin for like 26 seconds and then the little 30 megs of samples would load uh, in the last half a second. So I was trying to figure out a way to reduce the number of patches and this is what I got to, but then I liked it. So this is what I stuck with. I think this is a good compromise. So anyway, a uh, quick overview. So you would take a VIL file. Um, I've got within this file, five separate groups, VI groups. The VI groups are broken into the individual sections. You have basses, cellos, violas, violins, two violins, one. And then within those, you have the same five setups, uh, legato, long shorts, arcs, trills, trims, and harmonics. So I'm not going to activate these uh, in this screencast, but uh, each of the different contact patches has all of those articulations loaded in the key switch um, the, of the 10 articulations. So everything's consistent and I can keep it there. Now, why do I have them all grouped together and why do I have them all also um, five different patches per instrument? Uh, depending on how you write strings, you may be okay with everything in one. If that's okay, then go for it. Keep them all in one single um, patch. If you use a lot of articulations, you may see that legato needs to fade out, and therefore you can't key switch out of that. Uh, and so uh, you may also want something like a, um, a harmonics patch playing separately that you can process with a, a, a very special type of reverb to give it a... a you know, shimmery effect. And then you have uh, your longs above that and shorts. So this gives the most flexibility without one articulation per track. Uh, and I like this. Uh, the other thing that you do with the groups is that you don't have to individually pan each of these instruments. Uh, you just pan the group. And any processing that you have, you work on the group. Now, Century Strings is uh, recorded straight away. So for me, uh, that means that 
panning is gonna have to take place whether I use the mix mics or whether I use the close mics. And I like the close mic per, um, approach. So, uh, but either way, what that means is that on the group track, what you can do is because it's a stereo track, you'll want to make sure that you right click. Um, well, I've already done this one down here. Let me do one I haven't done. So violas. Again, I, I said this in a couple other videos. If you're watching them all at once, I, I'm sure you've heard me repeat this. I, I, these are my first sets of videos since I upgraded to High Sierra, and I used to be able to zoom in during the videos, and I really like that feature, but apparently something happened in the last update, and you can't zoom in when you're screen capping. Uh, you get a weird um, blurred screen. So like right now, I'm zooming into the bottom left-hand corner, and I'm sure that it did not look that clear in the video. And I did not discover this until after I shot five videos, and now I'm having to redo them. Now my voice is a little hoarse. So... This is the last one of the day. Um, hopefully we can finish it up real quick uh, on the group file. So I've got the violas, the group track. Uh, you'll notice that the pan is just a normal uh, left, right knob. Um, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to change the panner to stereo pan. And the reason is that I want the entire track not to just kind of dole out the right hand side and uh, keep the left hand side. Uh, you know, louder. I want to shift the entire stereo image to the left side and you have to use a stereo panner. So to do so, uh, you change it to stereo pan and then you can drag uh, the pan all the way to the left. And then you can also reduce the width a little bit. Um, that will give you a pretty good placement for the violins on the left hand side uh, coming through a stereo track. Um, another way that you could do it is if you select the actual track itself, uh, the violas, um, you could use uh, something like uh, Waves S1. Uh, I think that's a really awesome plugin. If you don't have it, it's a good, great tool. And you can see on the screen, it, this is what a stereo image would look like straight away. Uh, but you can pan it all the way to the left. That moves all the left and right channel to the left. And if you want to get a little funky with it, you can adjust the asymmetry. Um, so, you know, these little things help uh, when you're placing an instrument like violins all the way to the left and, uh, you know, your basses and whatnot to the right. So consider S1. Uh, I, I prefer that a little than to the stereo panner down here, but uh, to each their own. That's why we all have all these options. So anyway, uh, this is, a, I guess, just the general overview of how I would do the strings. I've also got the same setup mirrored for Sordinos. Um, and then the brass. It, the brass comes as two libraries, Ensemble and Solo. And for me, I, I'm still talking about ADO Century Series. Uh, for me, I put them all together. And the reason is that you have, um, in the Ensemble section, everything but a tuba. And you kind of have to have a tuba. So the tuba is in the solo. And that just made me decide to put it all together. So between the ensemble and the solo, I've got a trumpets group, a flugelhorn group, a horns, trombones, tuba, and some basso. Now, when I look at those, for example, if I open up the flugelhorn, you'll see that I've got these broken out to three patches or three tracks. I've got a legato, a shorts key switch, and then I have a dynamics and sustains. Those three give me almost everything I need for all of the instruments. And I think that works really well. It's a good compromise on system resources. Um, so that's what that looks like. Some of the instruments have muted articulations, if that is the case, and different levels. If that's the case, then I have versions like that. So for example, trumpets, I've got a legato, trumpets for legato key switch, trumpets for shorts key switch, uh, muted shorts key switch, Dynamics and Sustains key switch and Muted Dynamics and Sustains key switch. Now that was just for Trumpets 4. Then you've got Trumpets 2, Trumpet. If I had done one articulation per track, which again, that's been my preference, uh, this would have been a very long and in-depth and ridiculous type of track listing. Uh, it makes it kind of difficult to do um, fast phrases when you've got all these different articulations on different tracks but it does give you greater control. So there are some pros and cons. Um, I'm going this method. I like this method today. Um, that may change. So just heads up there. Uh, but this is what I like today. And I thought I'd share that with you uh, to all the OTR users and actually anybody who just uh, is looking at uh, century strings and thinking and brass and, you know, 
considering adding it to their workflow and what it would look like. So I hope that helped. I hope you see what that looks like. Uh, at some point I'll unveil the whole template of how my workflow is. Uh, it's a monster, but, uh, until that point, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.